the book of Abraham. In the land of the Chaldeans, at the residence of my fathers, I, Abraham, saw that it was needful for me to obtain another place of residence. And, finding there was greater happiness and peace and rest for me, I sought for the blessings of the fathers and the right whereunto I should be ordained to administer the same, having been myself a follower of righteousness, desiring also to be one who possessed great knowledge, and to be a greater follower of righteousness and to possess a greater knowledge, and to be a father of many nations, a prince of peace, and desiring to receive instructions and to keep the commandments of God, I became a rightful heir, a high priest, holding the right belonging to the fathers. It was conferred upon me from the fathers. It came down from the fathers from the beginning of time, yet even from the beginning or before the foundation of the earth down to the present time, even the right of the firstborn or the first man, who is Adam, or first father, through the fathers and to me. I sought for mine appointment under the priesthood according to the appointment of God under the fathers concerning the seed. My fathers, having turned from their righteousness and from the holy commandments which the Lord their God had given unto them under the worshipping of the gods of the heathen, utterly refused to hearken to my voice. For their hearts were set to do evil, and were wholly turned to the god of Elkanah, and the god of Libna, and the god of Mamakra, and the god of Koresh, and the god of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Therefore they turned their hearts to the sacrifice of the heathen, in offering up their children unto these dumb idols, and hearkened not unto my voice, but endeavored to take away my life by the hand of the priest of Elkanah. The priest of Elkanah was also the priest of Pharaoh. Now at this time it was the custom of the priest of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, to offer up upon the altar which was built in the land of Chaldea for the offering unto these strange gods, men, women, and children. And it came to pass that the priest made an offering unto the god of Pharaoh, and also unto the god of Shagriel, even after the manner of the Egyptians. Now the god of Shagriel was the sun. Even the thank offering of a child did the priest of Pharaoh offer upon the altar, which stood by the hill called Potiphar's hill, at the head of the plain of Olishem. Now this priest had offered upon this altar three virgins at one time, who were the daughters of Onita, one of the royal descent directly from the loins of Ham. These virgins were offered up because of their virtue. They would not bow down to worship gods of wood or of stone. Therefore they were killed upon this altar, and it was done after the manner of the Egyptians. And it came to pass that the priests laid violence upon me, that they might slay me also as they did those virgins upon this altar, and that you may have a knowledge of this altar. I will refer you to the representation at the commencement of this record. It was made after the form of a bedstead, such as was had among the Chaldeans, and it stood before the gods of Elkanah, Libna, Mamakra, Korash, and also a god like unto that of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. That you may have an understanding of these gods, I have given you the fashion of them, and the figures at the beginning, which manner of figures is called by the Chaldeans, Ralianos which signify hieroglyph six. And as they lifted up their hands upon me, that they might offer me up and take away my life, behold, I lifted up my voice unto the Lord my God. And the Lord hearkened and heard, and he filled me with the vision of the Almighty. And the angel of his presence stood by me, and immediately unloosed my bands. And his voice was unto me, Abraham, Abraham, Behold, my name is Jehovah, and I have heard thee, and have come down to deliver thee, and to take thee away from thy father's house, and from all thy kinsfolk into a strange land which thou knowest not of. And this because they have turned their hearts away from me to worship the god of Elkanah, and the god of Libna, and the god of Mamakra, and the god of Korash, and the god of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. 
Therefore I have come down to visit them, and to destroy him, who hath lifted up his hand against thee, Abraham, my son, to take away thy life. Behold, I will lead thee by my hand, and I will take thee to put upon thee my name, even the priesthood of thy father, and my power shall be over thee. As it was with Noah, so shall it be with thee. But through thy ministry my name shall be known in the earth forever, for I am thy God. Behold, Potiphar's hill was in the land of Ur of Chaldea. And the Lord broke down the altar of Elkanah and of the gods of the land, and utterly destroyed them, and smote the priests that he died. And there was great mourning in Chaldea, and also in the court of Pharaoh, which Pharaoh signifies king by royal blood. Now this king of Egypt was the descendant from the loins of Ham, and was a partaker of the blood of the Canaanites by birth. From this descent sprang all the Egyptians, and thus the blood of the Canaanites was preserved in the land. The land of Egypt being first discovered by a woman who was the daughter of Ham, and the daughter of Egyptus, which in the Chaldean signifies Egypt, which signifies that which is forbidden. When this woman discovered the land, it was under water, who afterwards settled her sons in it, and thus from Ham sprang that race, which preserved the curse in the land. Now the first government of Egypt was established by Pharaoh, the eldest son of Egyptus, the daughter of Ham, and it was after the manner of the government of Ham, which was patriarchal. Pharaoh, being a righteous man, established his kingdom, and judged his people wisely and justly all his days, seeking earnestly to imitate that order established by the fathers in the first generations in the days of the first patriarchal reign, even in the reign of Adam, and also of Noah his father, who blessed him with the blessings of the earth and with the blessings of wisdom, but cursed him as pertaining to the priesthood. Now Pharaoh, being of that lineage by which he could not have the right of priesthood, notwithstanding the pharaohs would fain claim it from Noah through Ham, therefore my father was led away by their idolatry. But I shall endeavor hereafter to delineate the chronology running back from myself to the beginning of the creation, for the records have come into my hands, which I hold unto this present time. Now, after the priest of Elkanah was smitten that he died, there came a fulfillment of those things which were said unto me concerning the land of Chaldea, that there should be a famine in the land. Accordingly, a famine prevailed throughout all the land of Chaldea. My father was sorely tormented because of the famine, and he repented of the evil which he had determined against me to take away my life. But the records of the fathers, even the patriarchs, concerning the right of priesthood, the Lord my God preserved in mine own hands. Therefore a knowledge of the beginning of the creation, and also of the planets and of the stars, as they were made known unto thy fathers, have I kept even unto this day. I shall endeavor to write some of these things upon this record for the benefit of my posterity that shall come after me. Now the Lord God caused the famine to wax sore in the land of Ur, insomuch that Haran, my brother, died, but Terah, my father, yet lived in the land of Ur of the Chaldees. And it came to pass that I, Abraham, took Sarai to wife, and Nahor, my brother, took Milcah to wife, who was the daughter of Haran. Now the Lord said unto me, Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto the land that I will show thee. Therefore I left the land of Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And I took Lot, my brother's son, and his wife, and Sarai, my wife, and also my father followed after me unto the land which we denominated Haran. And the famine abated, and my father tarried in Haran, and dwelt there, as there were many flocks in Haran. And my father turned again unto his idolatry, therefore he continued in Haran. 
But I, Abraham, and Lot, my brother's son, prayed unto the Lord, and the Lord appeared unto me, and said unto me, Arise, and take Lot with thee, for I have proposed to take thee away out of Haran, and to make of thee a minister to bear my name in a strange land, which I will give unto thy seed after thee, for an everlasting possession, when they hearken to my voice. For I am the Lord thy God, I dwell in heaven, the earth is my footstool. I stretch my hand over the sea, and it obeys my voice. I cause the wind and the fire to be my chariot. I say to the mountains, Depart hence, and behold, they are taken away by a whirlwind in an instant, suddenly. My name is Jehovah, and I know the end from the beginning. Therefore my hand shall be over thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee above measure, and make thy name great among all nations. And thou shalt be a blessing unto thy seed after thee, that in their hands they shall bear this ministry and priesthood unto all nations. And I will bless them through thy name, for as many as receive this gospel shall be called after thy name, and shall be accounted thy seed, and shall rise up and bless thee as their father. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. And in thee, that is, in thy priesthood, and in thy seed, that is, thy priesthood. For I give unto thee a promise, that this right shall continue in thee, and in thy seed after thee. That is to say, the literal seed, or the seed of the body, shall all the families of the earth be blessed, even with the blessings of the gospel which are the blessings of salvation, even of life eternal. Now, after the Lord had withdrawn from speaking to me, and withdrawn his face from me, I said in my heart, Thy servant has sought thee earnestly, now I have found thee. Thou didst send thine angel to deliver me from the gods of Elkanah, and I will do well to hearken unto thy voice. Therefore let thy servant rise up and depart in peace. So I, Abraham, departed as the Lord had said unto me, and Lot with me. And I, Abraham, was sixty and two years old when I departed out of Haran. And I took Sarai, whom I took to wife, when I was in Ur of Chaldea, and Lot, my brother's son, and all our substance that we had gathered, and the souls that we had won in Haran, and came forth in the way to the land of Canaan and dwelt in tents as we came on our way. Therefore eternity was our covering and our rock and our salvation as we journeyed from Haran by the way of Jershon to come to the land of Canaan. Now I, Abraham, built an altar in the land of Jershon and made an offering unto the Lord and prayed that the famine might be turned away from my father's house, that they might not perish. And then we passed from Jershon through the land unto the place of Sechem. It was situated in the plains of Morah, and we had already come into the borders of the land of the Canaanites, and I offered sacrifice there in the plains of Morah, and called on the Lord devoutly, because we had already come into the land of this idolatrous nation. And the Lord appeared unto me in answer to my prayers and said unto me, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And I, Abraham, arose from the place of the altar, which I had built unto the Lord, and removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched my tent there, Bethel on the west, and Hai on the east. And there I built another altar unto the Lord, and called again upon the name of the Lord. And I, Abraham, journeyed, going on still towards the south, and there was a continuation of a famine in the land. And I, Abraham, concluded to go down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine became very grievous. And it came to pass, when I was come near to enter into Egypt, the Lord said unto me, Behold, Sarai, thy wife, is a very fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass, when the Egyptians shall see her, they will say, She is his wife, and they will kill you. 
but they will save her alive. Therefore see that ye do on this wise. Let her say unto the Egyptians, She is thy sister, and thy soul shall live. And it came to pass that I, Abraham, told Sarai, my wife, all that the Lord hath said unto me. Therefore say unto them, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. And I, Abraham, had the Urim and Thummim, which the Lord my God had given unto me in Ur of the Chaldees. And I saw the stars, that they were very great, and that one of them was nearest unto the throne of God. And there were many great ones which were near unto it. And the Lord said unto me, These are the governing ones. And the name of the great one is Kolob, because it is near unto me. For I am the Lord thy God. I have set this one to govern all those which belong to the same order as that upon which thou standest. And the Lord said unto me by the Yerm and Thummim, that Kolob was after the manner of the Lord, according to its times and seasons, and the revolutions thereof. That one revolution was a day unto the Lord, after his manner of reckoning, it being one thousand years, according to the time appointed, unto that whereon thou standest. This is the reckoning of the Lord's time, according to the reckoning of Kolob. And the Lord said unto me, the planet which is the lesser light, lesser than that which is to rule the day, even the night, is above or greater than that upon which thou standest in point of reckoning. For it moveth in order more slow. This is in order because it standeth above the earth, upon which thou standest. Therefore the reckoning of its time is not so many as to its number of days, and of months, and of years. And the Lord said unto me, Now, Abraham, these two facts exist. Behold, thine eyes see it. It is given unto thee to know the times of reckoning, and the set time, yea, the set time of the earth upon which thou standest, and the set time of the greater light, which is set to rule the day, and the set time of the lesser light, which is set to rule the night. Now the set time of the lesser light is a longer time as to its reckoning than the reckoning of the time of the earth upon which thou standest. And where these two facts exist, there shall be another fact above them. That is, there shall be another planet whose reckoning of time shall be longer still. And thus there shall be the reckoning of the time of one planet above another, until thou come nigh unto Kolob, which Kolob is after the reckoning of the Lord's time, which Kolob is set nigh unto the throne of God to govern all those planets, which belong to the same order as that upon which thou standest. And it is given unto thee to know the set time of all the stars that are set to give light, until thou come near unto the throne of God. Thus I, Abraham, talked with the Lord face to face, as one man talketh with another, and he told me of the works which his hands had made. And he said unto me, My son, my son, and his hand was stretched out. Behold, I will show you all these. And he put his hand upon mine eyes, and I saw those things which his hands had made, which were many, and they multiplied before mine eyes, and I could not see the end thereof. And he said unto me, This is Sheneha, which is the sun. And he said unto me, Kokob, which is star. And he said unto me, Olia, which is the moon. And he said unto me, Kokalbim, which signifies stars, or all the great lights, which were in the firmament of heaven. And it was in the night time when the Lord spake these words unto me, I will multiply thee, and thy seed after thee, like unto these. And if thou canst count the number of sands, so shall be the number of thy seeds. And the Lord said unto me, Abraham, I show these things unto thee before ye go into Egypt, that ye may declare all these words. If two things exist, and there be one above the other, there shall be greater things above them. 
Therefore, Kolob is the greatest of all the Kokalbim that thou hast seen, because it is nearest unto me. Now, if there be two things, one above the other, and the moon be above the earth, then it may be that a planet or a star may exist above it. And there is nothing that the Lord thy God shall take in his heart to do, but what he will do it. Howbeit, that he made the greater star, as also, if there be two spirits, and one shall be more intelligent than the other, yet these two spirits, notwithstanding one is more intelligent than the other, have no beginning, they existed before, they shall have no end, they shall exist after, for they are Gnalam, or eternal. And the Lord said unto me, These two facts do exist, that there are two spirits, one being more intelligent than the other, there shall be another more intelligent than they. I am the Lord thy God, I am more intelligent than they all. The Lord thy God sent his angel to deliver thee from the hands of the priest of Elkanah. I dwell in the midst of them all. I now therefore have come down unto thee to declare unto thee the works which my hands have made, wherein my wisdom excelleth them all. For I rule in the heavens above and in the earth beneath, in all wisdom and prudence over all the intelligences thine eyes have seen from the beginning. I came down in the beginning in the midst of all the intelligences thou hast seen. Now the Lord hath shown unto me, Abraham, the intelligences that were organized before the world was. And among all these there were many of the noble and great ones. And God saw these souls that they were good. And he stood in the midst of them. And he said, These I will make my rulers. For he stood among those that were spirits. And he saw that they were good. And he said unto me, Abraham, Thou art one of them, thou wast chosen before thou wast born. And there stood one among them that was like unto God, and he said unto those who were with him, We will go down, for there is space there, and we will take of these materials, and we will make an earth whereon these may dwell. And we will prove them herewith, to see if they will do all things whatsoever the Lord their God shall command them. And they who keep their first estate shall be added upon, and they who keep not their first estate shall not have glory in the same kingdom with those who keep their first estate. And they who keep their second estate shall have glory added upon their heads forever and ever. And the Lord said, Whom shall I send? And one answered like unto the Son of Man, Here am I, send me. And another answered and said, Here am I, send me. And the Lord said, I will send the first. And the second was angry, and kept not his first estate. And at that day many followed after him. And then the Lord said, Let us go down. And they went down at the beginning, and they, that is the gods, organized and formed the heavens and the earth. And the earth, after it was formed, was empty and desolate, because they had not formed anything but the earth, and darkness reigned upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of the gods was brooding upon the face of the waters. And they, the gods, said, Let there be light, and there was light. And they, the gods, comprehended the light, for it was bright, and they divided the light, or caused it to be divided from the darkness. And the gods called the light day, and the darkness they called night. And it came to pass that from the evening until morning they called night, and from the morning until the evening they called day. And this was the first, or the beginning of that which they called day and night. And the gods also said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and it shall divide the waters from the waters. And the gods ordered the expanse, so that it divided the waters which were under the expanse from the waters which were above the expanse, and it was so, even as they ordered. And the gods called the expanse heaven. And it came to pass that it was from evening until morning that they called night. And it came to pass that it was from morning until evening that they called day. 
and this was the second time that they called night and day. And the gods ordered, saying, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the earth come up dry. And it was so as they ordered. And the gods pronounced the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters pronounced they great waters. And the gods saw that they were obeyed. And the gods said, Let us prepare the earth to bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed in itself yieldeth its own likeness upon the earth. And it was so even as they ordered. And the gods organized the earth to bring forth grass from its own seed, and the herb to bring forth herb from its own seed, yielding seed after his kind, and the earth to bring forth the tree from its own seed, yielding fruit, whose seed could only bring forth the same in itself after his kind. And the gods saw that they were obeyed. And it came to pass that they numbered the days from the evening until the morning they called night. And it came to pass from the morning until the evening they called day, and it was the third time. And the gods organized the lights in the expanse of the heaven, and caused them to divide the day from the night, and organized them to be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and for years, and organized them to be for lights in the expanse of the heaven, to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And the gods organized the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. With the lesser light they set the stars also. And the gods set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to cause to divide the light from the darkness. And the gods watched those things which they had ordered until they obeyed. And it came to pass that it was from evening until morning that it was night, and it came to pass that it was from morning until evening that it was day, and it was the fourth time. And the gods said, Let us prepare the waters to bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that have life, and the fowl that they may fly above the earth in the open expanse of heaven. And the gods prepared the waters that they might bring forth great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters were to bring forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after their kind. And the gods saw that they would be obeyed, and that their plan was good. And the gods said, We will bless them, and cause them to be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, or great waters, and cause the fowl to multiply in the earth. And it came to pass that it was from evening until morning that they called night. And it came to pass that it was from morning until evening that they called day, and it was the fifth time. And the gods prepared the earth to bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after their kind. And it was so, as they had said. And the gods organized the earth to bring forth the beast after their kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after its kind, and the gods saw they would obey. And the gods took counsel among themselves, and said, Let us go down and form man in our image after our likeness, and we will give them dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So the gods went down to organize man in their own image, in the image of the gods to form they him, male and female to form they them. And the gods said, We will bless them. And the gods said, We will cause them to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And the gods said, Behold, we will give them every herb bearing seed that shall come upon the face of all the earth, and every tree which shall have fruit upon it, yea, the fruit of the tree yielding seed to them we will give it, it shall be for their meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, behold, we will give them life. 
and also we will give to them every green herb for meat. And all of these things shall be thus organized. And the God said, We will do everything that we have said, and organize them, and behold, they shall be very obedient. And it came to pass that it was from evening until morning. They called night, and it came to pass that it was from morning until evening that they called day, and they numbered the sixth time. And thus we will finish the heavens and the earth, and all the hosts of them. And the gods said among themselves on the seventh time, We will end our work, which we have counseled, and we will rest on the seventh time from all our work which we have counseled. And the gods concluded upon the seventh time, because that on the seventh time they would rest from all their works which they, the gods, counseled among themselves to form and sanctified it. And thus were their decisions at the time that they counseled among themselves to form the heavens and the earth. And the gods came down and formed these, the generations of the heavens and of the earth, when they were formed in the day that the gods formed the earth and the heavens, according to all that which they had said concerning every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the gods had not caused it to rain upon the earth when they counseled to do them and had not formed a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the gods formed man from the dust of the ground, and took his spirit, that is, the man's spirit, and put it into him, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the gods planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there they put the man whose spirit they had put into the body which they had formed. And out of the ground made the gods to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. There was a river running out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. And the gods took the man, and put him in the garden of Eden, to dress it and to keep it. And the gods commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the time that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Now I, Abraham, saw that it was after the Lord's time, which was after the time of Kolob, for as yet the gods had not appointed unto Adam his reckoning. And the gods said, Let us make and help me for the man, for it is not good that the man should be alone. Therefore we will form and help me for him. And the gods caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And they took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh in the stead thereof. And of the rib which the gods had taken from man formed they a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This was bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. Now she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. And out of the ground the gods formed every beast of the field, and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them, and whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that should be the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, to the fowl of the air, to every beast of the field, and for Adam there was found and help meet for him.